who has done a great job in spreading a conservative message all across New York State. He's got a podcast that those of you that haven't listened to it should, should give it a try. Mike, come on up. We're going to hear from Mike Vasquez. Mike Vasquez, say hello to the crowd. Let's give Mike a warm round of applause. <laughs> Before I get started, how is everyone? You doing well? Thank you. I want to start off by saying I thank you all for being here. It's very important and we all appreciate it. We appreciate the support, especially on a nice warm day like today. Gotta love the wind, thank goodness for it. And I have to say, we've heard from some great speakers so far. We're going to hear from some more great speakers, including my friend, Assemblywoman Claudia Tenney, who's going to be speaking very shortly. Now, when I was first honored with an invitation to speak before this great audience, with a list of fellow speakers of such a great magnitude, I have to admit that I was a bit embarrassed, if I may be direct. I was not sure that I was worthy of such an honor, uh, but I'm going to strive to live up to the ability and communication of my fellow speakers. Such great, noble, and powerful individuals in the fight to defend our Second Amendment as it defends all of our rights in this nation. Truly, I am grateful to be on this stage. That said, I'm not at a loss for words of my own. For those of you who have followed my political commentary, my podcast, my speeches at events like this, large and small, you know two things, you know that I believe in two things very strongly. That the key to the greatness of our nation is the fact that we have the First Amendment and the Second Amendment. The first because it protects our freedom to speak about things that some may not like. Without hate speech or inciting violence like Black Lives Matters and others of their ilk, this, our open, free, and direct celebration of thought and the Constitution embraces the core of our nation and our rights such as the debate on whether concealed carry could protect innocent lives in our schools and social events. Protection from events like San Bernardino and Orlando. It's an old conversation our, converse, our nation needs to have again, calmly and without the distraction of emotion that our opponents thrive on. A conversation that is honest, unlike Hillary Clinton, who preys on the emotions of the nation to promote her political agenda as she did in Philadelphia when she tried to claim that there's a problem in America and not the mentally deranged, violent, domestic terrorists. But such discussion on this and issues like the FBI investigation without consequence to a political elite, executive overreach, our national debt, creating jobs without government intervention, jobs that actually last and can be a boon to our communities and nation. All these discussions can only happen with the power of the Second Amendment behind it. Because it is only as our founding fathers envisioned that the government should fear and respect the power of the people because the populace can and does arm itself. That enables the peaceful government of America that has continued for 240 years. It is for this reason that the Ninth Circuit Court also sided with us, stating that our ability to buy and sell firearms shall not be infringed, that, that it is the back door to taking and limiting our access to the firearms that hold our government at bay. Mind you, I love our government. Yes, it is flawed, as the FBI and the Department of Justice have proved to us in recent weeks. And yes, I do not always agree, and I'm speaking specifically to Governor Cuomo and President Obama about that. But only in America can our nation transition peacefully from president to president, and each of us not only has the power to become part of our government, we can directly help to change the course of that government. That needs to shape, that need to shape our government, to set the nation on the right path, may never be more present than it is today. Career politicians like Governor Cuomo, Hillary Clinton, Senator Chuck Schumer, Representative Nancy Pelosi, and many others, prey on emotional moments of the nation, 
injecting false images of safety at the highest cost of personal freedom, merely because they don't like the cosmetic look or idea of firearms. Which smacks of arrogance when we consider these same people are surrounded by armed guards. A level of protection they feel is only warranted for the select few elites they approve of, if we are to understand Representative Charles Rangel. It's because these people, it is because of these people, what I like to call modern day political nobles or career politicians, that we must stay vigilant. Laws like the SAFE Act and the overreach of the executive orders of President Obama in 2013 seek to turn the public into serfs, with Obamacare and Common Core thrown in to make sure the job is done. It is these disconnected politicians career politicians, their restrictive laws, and the attempt to dumb down the populace that endangers the very fabric of our nation. Probably not today or tomorrow. Not while generations still remember the freedoms we have and the meaning of our Constitution. But in five years? In ten? How about twenty? Their plan is to win over time, counting on the nation to forget and to become complacent. That is why events like today is so important. It's why organizations like SCOPE and Gun Owners of America, conservatives and the Tea Party, Republicans, and even non-progressive members of the Democratic Party need to gather and speak out with a loud, clear voice. We are free, not because we are afraid to speak even as the PC mongers seek to silence us, we are free because we restrain the government from corruption that would otherwise overrun it. We are free because we are Americans and we embrace everything and all that that entails. Right now there's over 300 million firearms in America. In New York, there are over 5 million law-abiding gun owners. If firearms are as evil as our political opponents believed, there would be no people in the nation. If law-abiding gun owners were as reckless and dangerous as the liberal left claim, New York State would look more like Detroit or Chicago. But we know the truth. Our neighbors and our communities know the truth. Even progressives like Clinton and de Blasio and Cuomo know the truth. The truth is, law-abiding gun owner Americans are some of the most respectful, cautious, and life-affirming people in the world. Yes, these progressives would have the world believe that the leading city for deaths by firearms, Chicago, is to be emulated and not rejected. That the full range of restricted laws in California that they hope to make a national reality will allow the public to be covered in a blanket of bliss rather than blood that an inanimate object, a firearm or a truck, holds a devious will as opposed to the mentally deranged or criminal in intent like we saw in Dallas and Baton Rouge or overseas, once again in France and now in Germany. When you say it out loud, it sounds silly, doesn't it? When you think about it rationally, it sounds incoherent. The rally called the progressive seems more akin to the mad ravings than sound domestic policy. And I can prove what happens when a deranged criminal breaks into your home to cause you and your family harm? You and I, we defend our families. What does a safe act loving progressive do in that same situation? Do they open their arms and try to give the criminal a hug? Do they open a dialogue and investigate the childhood terrors of that criminal? <laughs> No. What they do is what you and I would. Just like North Carolina Democrat State Senator Souls, who shot the intruder who entered his home. Even so, we cannot wait for the progressive liberal leaders and politicians to, be, to come to a desperate situation before they realize the error of their ways. Nor should we ever feel like we have to. Because the grief the day after San Bernardino, after Orlando, after Nice, France, today, after Germany, is too late. 
Our founding fathers took great care when they wrote the Second Amendment, making sure that the needs of the people would be foremost and all-encompassing. This brings me to the point of my speech. And for the liberals and the progressives that are actually listening to this, if you've heard nothing else, pay attention now. Government, especially the American government, is best when it does the least. No government can micromanage the lives of citizens. Communism and socialism have tried for 75 years and failed in every part of the planet that they can be found, creating more and more redundant laws, isolating more and more law-abiding citizens, neither makes the public free nor does it make you safe. America does not have a problem with laws. We already have a law to cover killing. It's called murder. We already have laws in place to address prejudice and hate, and they're aptly called hate crimes. Banning an AR-15 will not stop murder. Limiting magazine sizes will not end hate crimes. Gun bans and restrictions of freedoms, like proposals to place millions on secret lists without due cause, a rule that begs violation of our Fourth Amendment to guarantee compliance, do nothing to save lives or promote freedom. They just micromanage lives and grow the government into a police state like China and nations that millions flee in favor of America every year. Gun owners in America are compassionate people. We love our families, we love our neighbors and our communities fiercely. We live by the laws of our nation and when those laws are just and enacted with due process. But no American should ever be subject to the heavy hand of government. That's why the New York Safe Act has less than 1% compliance. That's why responsible Americans oppose secret lists denying rights and freedoms without prior notice and no means of correction or of removal. But in America, we don't need a revolution to protect our rights. At least, not the kind of revolution that sheds blood or takes lives. We have a more powerful tool available to us. We can vote. I mentioned the five million gun owners in America just a moment ago. That one voting block filled with Republicans, conservatives, libertarians, and yes, even some Democrats are more than enough to change the course of this state as just one example. It would take just one election cycle voting out career politicians and would-be nobles and replacing them. Just one election cycle to replace the members of Congress that have been there forever, the New York Assembly, Governor Cuomo, and the local elected officials that have done nothing to protect the people. That one act would not only re-secure our path back to the rights of the original 13 states, but would send a message that would ripple across this entire nation. As a nation of gun owners, our vote can secure the Second Amendment as well. Our next president and those who we are going to send to Congress, like Claudia Tenney, will pick at least one, if not three, Supreme Court justices. As I mentioned, there are several cases that will define the Second Amendment for the next generation or more. Who we collectively pick will either continue the legacy of freedom that has been paid for with the blood and lives of far too many of our members of military, or we can choose Hillary Clinton and progressives. And that will continue to whittle away at our freedoms until the nation is just one big Chicago, or maybe even Baltimore. I am often asked, what is more powerful than a gun? The answer really shouldn't surprise anyone. It's an American citizen who is armed with the Constitution and wrapped and cloaked in the power of our vote. That alone is enough to, that is just enough power to promote freedom and uplift tens of millions around the globe as we have for centuries, if we use it. So I'm here today with so many powerful speakers that have appeared on this stage and will again.
with the support and goodwill of everyone here in the audience and everyone who will be watching this or hearing this over the internet and on the news to make a call to arms. I say to each of you, rise up. Use the power of the vote. Together, we can guarantee the freedom of speech and protect our future generations from a, sort, a short-sighted, micromanaging government. And finally, I will say to you what may be the most powerful and motivating speech sentence that has ever been said in the world. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and poster posterity, to ordain and establish this Constitution of the United States of America. I love that sentence. I thank you for joining me in celebrating our nation and our Constitution and allowing me to speak with you today. My name is Michael Vasquez. May God bless America and may you all live in freedom. Mike Vasquez, everybody. Mike, what, what, how do they find your podcast? No sound bites allowed. No sound bites allowed is the blog. That's uh, and, and podcast. Thank you very much for joining us today. All right, we've got somebody.